Hello, Tim Wilmot here and welcome to my watercolour demonstration. This time I cover how to paint boats. Now, I've done this a few times before, but in this painting I've got quite a few different types of boats. Uh, boats in different positions, boats in the background, the middle ground, the foreground, all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Plus, we've got quite a soft uh, misty look to the scene as well. Now just before I go on through this video, uh, this video is free to watch uh, but not free to produce. If you do like these videos please consider supporting me via Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash Tim Wilmot, T-I-M-W-I-L-M-O-T. Every month or two I set a painting project for my members and for a small pledge, very small pledge, I give you a personal critique in return with some extra hints and tips. Uh, for more details, please go to my Patreon site. You'll find the links in the description of this video. So the scene for this painting is the river Tamar in the UK, down in Devon. And this is looking towards the city of Plymouth you can't see it because it's uh, it's very early in the morning. Nice misty scene. We're looking east. Um, Plymouth is in, in the background there. We're looking at it from the town of Saltash on this side. Um, low tide. So we've got some boats in the water, some boats out of the water. And as I said, we've got all sorts of different shapes and sizes here. Um, boats in different pointing in different directions. So we've got some very small, soft looking boats in the background, few reflections of the mast there, then in the middle ground, um, a group of boats as well, pointing towards us, maybe slightly easier. Um, on the left and on the right, two dominant boats, um, again, very different from each other. Um, but they're pointing towards us. Um, maybe one or two of these boats need a, a lick of paint, but that gives them a nice sort of feel um, to it. So it's not too, not too pristine and tidy and new. And then in the foreground, we've got these two um, dinghies or tender boats here. Again, different shapes, one with a pointed end, pointed bow, one with a flat um, bow as well. And then there's the texture of this lovely sandy beach here and some ropes um, which will will help with the perspective and lead us into the scene. So let's see how we get on. The paper I'm using for this demo is Saunders Waterford. It's cold press surface so that's medium texture and 300 grams in weight. I'm using a soft pencil. Uh, I think this is a 3B pencil just to get in the outline shapes of the boats. So I started with the horizon line and just looking at my reference photo as I say, just looking at the shapes of those boats and gradually coming in to the middle ground and towards me. So these boats, a lot of them are facing towards us, which makes them symmetrical, a little bit easier to do. Perhaps a tricky one is that one that I'm just doing now which is just, well, we can see a lot of the side of the boat, but they are mainly, these boats, they're just lots of curves. And it's a case of just observing very closely these boats and practicing. Do lots of drawings of boats beforehand if you're not too confident with um, the painting of boats getting lots of practice with drawing boats, different shapes and sizes and pointing in different directions. Now I've made a decision to 
not um, with this boat on the right hand side just have if you like the the left hand half of it and likewise over on the left hand side we just have half of that boat as, as a, it's almost like a frame in a way um, left and right so I think that's quite a nice balance for the composition now this square boat the square this square ended boat is a little bit easy to do but we still got those curves left and right so I sometimes draw them in lightly look at the photograph again double check is is everything looking right does it look symmetrical does it look like a boat and then maybe go in with some heavier lines just to make those lines a little bit more defined when I start applying paint going over with my my washes I don't want to obliterate those drawings so if I, if I if things go in too lightly then it might be more difficult to to follow so this second nearby boat just a little bit more tricky because it's got a a pointed bow coming towards us it's also at a slight angle to us not directly head on pointing more over to the left so a little bit more tricky now the boat on the left hand side again pointing towards us so bow almost in the middle um, of of the boat and then thinking about perspective thinking about joining these different shapes as well I might cross hatch areas that are going to be in the shade just as a bit of reference for me to um, make sure I'm observing the, the the light areas and the dark areas of uh, of the scene as I'm as I'm going over with with paint and I, I can see exactly where the dark areas are going to be now I'm making a decision to slightly change some of these boats around um, just some minor changes so these boats that are in the middle ground I've drawn in the hull and then just an idea of where the reflections are going to be so the reflections are quite easy in this one of course it's almost a mirror image of what we of, of the object being reflected but I've got a few sort of wavy lines just to indicate a bit of ripple on the surface a bit of movement so I've tucked in that little boat just behind that one now this boat in the middle with the reddish top I'm not going to have the boat behind it I'm going to leave that one I don't think for some reason I just looked I just looked at the the boat behind this um, red top boat and I just just think it didn't look right in the composition so I've just taken the decision to not paint that in leave it out and either side of the boat there may be some fenders these rubbery things to protect the boat when they bounce into hard surfaces so again that they give the impression of a boat when you when you put in these little details of uh, fenders and boys and ropes and railings around boats it all helps so I've got in the major shapes now and I think hopefully well hopefully there's there's a good balance of these different shapes to help with the composition on the right hand side 
in the middle distance very complex so and, and it's all, also that's over on the right hand side of the picture so I don't want to put in too much detail over there um, we have to sort of be very careful with putting in too much detail immediately on the the sides of our painting to draw it we we'll, we'll want the center of attention to be somewhere in the in the middle of the the middle area of the painting not right right bang in the middle but sort of the middle area definitely not on the the left side or the uh the right side So I think that's it with the drawing and that's the end of stage one, so to speak. And stage two is the first wash. So let me explain my palette to you on the right hand side. So the colors from the top, I have neutral tint or Payne's Grey, a very dark, not black, but nearly dark, uh, nearly, nearly like a dark black. Um, below that is Burnt Umber, then Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Ridgeon Green, Cobalt Green, Cerulean Blue, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Alizon Crimson, a Bright Red, Light Red, Cadmium Orange, and Cad Yellow. Now I'm just putting in some clear water and then dropping in a very weak wash. That sky is very light and misty. This picture was taken in the autumn in the UK um, and it actually turned out to be a really nice day, but the start of the day was really misty, um, hazy, but the sun was doing its best to, to break through. So I'm gonna try and leave a little bit of brightness at the top towards the right there where the sun is coming through. So this wash going on top of wet, on top of moist uh, paper is just going to start um, moving around and I just dried the brush a bit just to lift off some of that paint and get a soft edge. The brush I'm using is a Raphael brush so it's it's uh, the maker's soft aqua it's synthetic hairs holds a lot of water got a nice uh, edge to it as well so and a nice point also so I could almost do the whole painting with one brush um, with a, so you see that, that flat edge there, which is very handy when you're trying to go around a few of the shapes of the boat. So a lot of these boats I'm going to paint around them, leave them white, we'll paint them in later on. might go over some of the some of the hulls because they will be a little bit darker than the sea around them so I'm just keeping on mixing coming into the shore here and now there's a little bit of light hitting the water just where I'm painting now so 
I'm just trying to trying to be careful to paint a few tiny little waves in there around that um, that that very light area, just to give an impression of the sun, the bright the bright morning sun hitting that area. Now, for the shoreline. And I will be going over this a few times just to um, just to, to to give different effects of the uh, shingle and little stones and pebbles on that beach. So this is just the first layer and starting from the left hand side. Keep going, bit of light red. So I'm introducing different colors as I'm going along. Not, it's not all too uniform. Now, if it does bleed in with the sea above, that doesn't matter. A lot of these, um, when, when watercolor does things, and you might think, it's a mistake. Generally, it's best to leave it and let it do what it wants to do because that's the charm of watercolor. So you can see just between those two boats on the shore, the that reddish sandy color is starting to bleed up into the water above, which doesn't matter. I mean, it's just going to uh, maybe give the impression of just just seeing a little bit of the of the um, the sand below the water there, the shallow water. Now, just let that first wash dry a bit, and fast forwarded the uh, recording. Um, I did use a hair dryer just to speed things along. Now I'm using a smaller mop brush and I'm just mixing and mixing and mixing until I think I've got the right value and the right ratio of water to pigments, the right sort of thickness if you like and just getting in a very soft, distant Plymouth on the other side of the river. Maybe just leave a bit of a gap where the sun is breaking through and make it quite difficult to see that middle area then continue on the right hand side and dragging this there's not too much paint on the brush and just dragging it very lightly across a rough paper we get little sparkles appearing which could be we're giving the impression maybe of far buildings structures on the far side. Now, there are a few very distant boats, so we don't want to, being distant, we don't want to put in too much detail, just almost blobs, a, a drag of the brush. But coming closer will I'll pay a bit more attention to these boats a bit more detailed they're going to look a bit more boat like hopefully so these yachts are we're looking at the side of these yachts and there's a group of them together there's sort of almost one shape so rather than 
painting them individually I'm thinking about the um, shape of the overall group now the right hand side there's a large number of yachts it's very difficult to see um, them individually they're just uh, all mixed in together um, so I'm just again giving that impression with the brush looking at my reference photo just thinking where I can introduce a few little highlights of um, some verticals or little dots where the sun is catching an object or two now I'm giving some definition to this right hand boat now that's up on the shore the big boat um, across the top of the uh, the front screen there on the cabin I've got I've got darker paint now so just going around the picture adding in a few more blobs they could be uh, boys floating in the water if something just a little bit too dark I'll just quickly lift it up lift it off with my fingers with my fingertips or I could use uh, a tissue so a lot darker now burnt umber ultramarine blue bit of burnt sienna and this quite tricky um, what would you call it it's like a little like a little um, cruiser that's uh, pointing away from us but we're looking mainly at the side and the back of the boat it's partly covered with some uh, tarpaulin or or uh, a cover over the cabin but I'll have the light hitting that back so leave it leave it unpainted and down to the water's edge paint around the boat that's in front of it so I've just given a bit of form to that to that yacht which I'm now going in with a slightly lighter color so the the cabin on top of the yacht careful to leave the paper unpainted where the light is just catching the top of the cabin and then the hull and I'm just making sure with the brush there I've got a good edge to it nice sharp edge because I want to be quite precise with the hull here and it's got some kind of a a fender in front of the uh, the bow now some reflections for this boat so I generally do the reflections right after doing the hull and that will allow the the reflections to merge in with the you might be able to just be able to see it ever so slightly 
it's traveling up the page. This darker color is going up into the lighter color and it's going to give us a nice sort of soft edge to that. So down the right hand side the reflections get a little bit more erratic as they come towards us. Now the reflections of that cruiser. I just waited a little bit for the the front yacht just to dry a little bit so it's not going to bleed too much when I go in with this darker these darker reflections of the cruiser. So side of the brush, make sure I've got a good edge to it holding the brush down towards the um, tip just to give me a bit more control than a few horizontal swipes left and right maybe leave just a few little gaps here and there where there's some light catching it and down to the this right hand boat. So we're just, we're just going around that boat now, giving it a bit more form. Um, it's going to look a lot better, hopefully, when I start painting in the details of that yacht. So bit of red, not too red, dull it down a bit with a bit of blue. Um, the light's hitting the top of this boat so I'm just painting around the front of it and the sides but leave the top unpainted except just for a few little lines, maybe there's an indication of some structure on the top there. And then the hull of this boat. This is where it's very important to make sure your initial drawing of the boat shapes are as good as you can get it because we're fo I'm just following those lines and if something was um, maybe didn't look right me following those lines it's, it's difficult to when you're going over the painting just suddenly changing your mind and uh, freeform um, painting those shapes it's a lot easier to get in those shapes correct first of all now I'm going over to these other boats just the hulls before we return to that red boat with the uh, reflections just before I need to do these reflections just before the hull dries I want to 
make them blend in with each other like the uh, the previous ones so that dark fender on the left hand side had that diagonally pointing down in the water and then the reflection for that and then continuing on round with the reflections so side of the brush slight angle random random lines and hopefully just beginning to look a little bit more boat like with the reflections So because this brush has got quite a, a flat edge to it, I'm able to do a few little thin horizontal lines across the water. So the reflections now of that far boat just tucked in behind this other yacht. in the middle on on the left there check my edge take off some water if there's too much like the red top boat I'll just leave a few bits of the top unpainted to give the impression of the light hitting that the hull on this one is going to be blue So it's a mid, well, it's a mid to dark blue, really. Little uh, fender on the left hand side, and then following my lines around the, the, the curve of the bow, and then down the other side, sweeping to the stern of the boat, just leaving a little white line at the top, just where the light is hitting the top of the hull down to the water's edge smudge out with the finger just to, finger just to get a bit of a, a soft edge now with the reflections So with, the, with those reflections, I've sort of drawn that left-hand edge of the reflections and then paint in behind that. And now, similarly on the right-hand side, drawing the, I'm painting the outline of the reflections, coming towards me just a bit more erratic
so the yacht on the left hand side just really the same as the the other boats with these these uh, bands of dark and light starting with the cabin and down to the top of the hull now a st steady a steady ish line starting thicker going a little bit nar narrower as I'm going towards the stern and just giving that little white line to show some sort of marking or paintwork I'm not sure exactly what it is um, just giving some some definition just making it more like a like a like a sort of slender a slender yacht now that the hull on this one a little bit battered a bit weathered darker towards the bottom and I'm just lifting out the back of this the the stern of the the boat the the light is really hitting that right hand edge so I needed to lift out while it was while the paint was still moist just lift it out with a paper tissue these two boats being in the foreground I do need to generally with the foreground I don't pay a lot of attention to the foreground it's it's handled in a very simplistic way very basic way not too much detail but this time slightly different I've got these two boats they're closer to us I've got to make them into convincing boat shapes um, yes they're different but I've gone in with the middle darks first of all careful to leave that white edge around the rim and with this square ended boat I've just painted a few horizontals in the middle of the boat and left a few little white areas of the paper showing maybe the, the light is hitting something wet or shiny now to give the beach just a little bit more texture and form and interest with the same brush mixing up a darker mixture bit of red bit of light red ultramarine blue almost a sort of purplish color in a way but just keep moving across the beach dragging almost it's almost like a dry brush stroke dragging it across the beach and because I've got rough paper I've, I've left a I'm giving myself little marks which could be pebbles or shingle or whatever keep going maybe a few darker bits in there warm warm and cool mix it all up uh, 
and a bit of splattering as well. In a controlled way, not uh, don't overdo it too much. So now the bigger boat on the right hand side, um, it's sort of a lot more weather than the one on the left hand side. So I want to try and give the impression of its, of its character. with the, uh, the, the the stains down the side of the boat. So starting from the top, coming down. This uh, main part of the cabin. And like the boat on the left, I want to leave a little white line around the top of the hull. So make sure I've got a good edge on my brush, not too much paint. And then hopefully in one stroke uh, from back to front, that's the top of the hull and then the bottom, the main part of the hull now. Can't really decide what colour it is, but it's a little bit darker than the top cabin. So careful line now leaving a little white gap just to indicate the top of the hull and continue on down. Now I don't need to be too careful with the painting here. The, the, uh, the more random I make these brush strokes, perhaps that's gonna gonna give the impression of this weathered um, hull, and just mixing in different um, pigments, different um, sorry different values. So some darks here. It's gone in on top of moist paint, so it's gonna gradually blend. It's, it's thicker than the paint I put on before, so I'm not gonna get any cauliflowers. And it's just going to give a nice sort of soft edge. Now, darker for the very bottom of the hull, where it's uh, resting on, on the shoreline. Coming up to the stern. Now there's, what I want to try and get here is just a few soft shadows underneath this hull. It's 
So to get that soft edge, I'm just smudging with my finger while it's all still wet. And I think I can get away with it here because I'm smudging onto that beach. So I'm just emphasizing that sort of uh, the texture of the beach. So now for the square ended dinghy, the darker sides. So carefully down to the ground and then a darker blue for the hull on the left hand side and I'll leave a little white line again along the side And then down to down to the ground and now for a bit of shadow below those so it's fairly dry brush strokes here not too wet on the brush and I'll smudge it out a little bit to get that soft edge again like the bigger yacht on the right and then the boat on the left So that edge is just too hard for this soft light. So I'll just smudge it out again. You're going to end up with dirty fingers doing this, but it all comes off. And then lastly, the boat on the left. So it's got a really dark bottom of the hull. And its reflections will just come over to the right and help define the left hand edge of the boat we've just been doing. So just a bit more splattering with some dark paint this time. So at this stage of the painting, I'm generally thinking about details and going in with uh, um, then using a smaller brush. Now I'm just smudging out a bit more of the hull on this square ended boat just needs to be a bit lighter than the shadows below. So smaller brush 
This is a synthetic round brush. A sort of medium sized brush, I guess you call it. So with a bit of neutral tint, just add a bit more form to the curve of the um, bottom of that boat. then pick up on a few a few more pebbles on the beach just little dots here and there now where I've got a little bit of lighter air in the beach I might sort of go in behind that with a bit of a bit of a darker value just to really paint a bit of shadow give the impression of a bit of shadow on that like uh, this one for example there's that lighter area and then just a bit of a line below it to give a bit of shadow few lines across the beach dirty up this yacht a bit more perhaps um, a rope coming off the back So back with the medium sized mop brush and make this uh, the hull of the um, boat on the left hand side just a little bit darker and on its on the other side there's a sort of stain or mark coming down the hull, so I'm just giving the impression of that now. And the interior of this uh, left-hand dinghy, this left-hand boat, just a sort of darker, a darker bit inside. It's going to be darker at the far end because the light is coming towards us. So a little bit lighter towards the front. And 
and the square ended boat. A bit more detail to this with the with the seat and the I guess the open bit in the middle. Careful not to paint over that or paint over the a couple of little white areas I had. Now back with the small synthetic brush for a few more details. Of course, we've got to get some mass in. Now these lines are not continuous lines. It's a bit of lost and found, which is a very common watercolor technique, drawing lines like this not having a continuous line just gives a a, a, a sense of um, atmosphere uh, to that line so it's not too not too uh, rigid and, and boring now a few horizontals on that middle yacht that side on And this is another thing that will make boats a bit more convincing. Some markings across the top of the hull and the waterline as well, a dark waterline. Quite often boats will have a, a dark waterline. And all those all those things on the right hand side, just, just a few darker marks there. So a slightly darker thicker mast but still lost and found just a little just a few little gaps here and there now this old boat on the right hand side let's do a few little windows some sort of trim along the uh, the hull need to get in the front windows as well. And normally, normally would do this with a bigger brush, but this this should be fine as long as it's pretty well loaded and. I've got pl plenty of paint to do it. So just sneak in a right hand window as well. Left hand and right hand window. So the middle boats, tiny little mast on that one. Again, some lines just below the top of the hull and one or two little marks above it.
Now this boat on the left hand side got a much thicker mast and with a dry brush stroke so I've, I've sort of in my mind I've got the line I'm going to follow and using the left hand edge of the paper as a sort of guide um, it's not parallel the, the boat's sort of leaning slightly to the right so so the the mast is um, it likewise is not true vertical um, just a few um, lines either side of that mast perhaps a rope or two just dangling off the side. And I'll have one or two ropes coming into the shore just sort of Bit of a zigzag pattern across the uh, the shore, but that that the angle just I think just helps lead the eye into the composition a le left hand one and right hand one. then maybe that square ended bow's got got a rope tying it down as well. So a few reflections of the far yachts. Generally, the further away those boats are, the less the less reflections you're going to get, apart from uh, obvious um, strong verticals like masts. So, just some final details with the darks. Perhaps just a few more master in the background. Just needs a bit more dark in there just to define the uh, reflection of that yacht a bit more. A 
few last bits of detail on that boat. So the last stage really has some final highlights. Which I will use uh, white gouache paint and a very um, small brush or a, pr a brush with a very good point and the paint is taken straight out of the tube I don't tend to mix any water with it and I picked up on a few of the ropes catching the light maybe a few little uh, pebbles or shells on the beach catching some light as well just a hint of some railings at the front of that yacht bit of light on the side of that rope that's it we're done so this is the end painting um, a group of boats on the river Tamar in Plymouth and early in the morning slightly misty the Sun is coming towards us and we've got lots of different boats different angles but those, think about values in watercolour, those in the distance are very crudely uh, painted in, um, just almost a thin horizontal line um, and a few hints of uh, uh, some masks as well. But as the boats come towards us, they get darker in values and, and we, we can put a few more details in them. Um, also with the reflections um, remember the way that I did the boats and reflections painting in the hull first and when that's while that's still moist going with the darker reflections we get this soft edge well this one here is almost one value this uh, the hull there and the reflection almost one object whereas here lighter lighter hull darker reflections but just a hint of little a bit of blending bleeding in there to give that soft edge and then the final details going in with a smaller brush adding in the mass so we've got a dry brush stroke here we've got lost and found lost and found for these masks and finally just a little bit of white gouache to pick up on some highlights the main the main areas of the painting that were the brightest like the um, the light area of this water here the top of the cabin um, the top of this cabin as well they, they were left um, unpainted but 
just little areas uh, like this white line here, that would be very difficult to paint around. So um, within reason, just a little bit of white gouache. So hopefully um, that's given you, uh, if you're just starting out in watercolor or starting to paint or wanting to paint boats, that's given you a, a few little hints and tips on my approach to painting boats to say, um, as I said at the beginning, do lots of um, initial sketches and drawings of boats if you're not used to um, painting them. Um, it's very difficult when, when you're doing a watercolor, it's very difficult to, if the, if the drawing, the initial drawing isn't quite right, very difficult to pull things back. So try and get that drawing uh, spot on. So hopefully you like um, this video. As I say, if you want to uh, follow any uh, projects that I've done and have a go at painting them yourselves and get a get a, a critique from me, please go up to my Patreon site, um, www.patreon.com forward slash Tim Wilmot. But um, hopefully catch up with you soon on the next video. Thanks very much indeed.